Emperor Antoninus has survived multiple assassination attempts, more adventurer shenaniganry, yeah, even more, and a mysterious plant rash, all within the space of the last 30 minutes of gameplay. How much longer can these good, well, if they can be called good vibes, how much longer can they last? I don't know. We'll have to see. Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Crusader Kings 3 in our Empire of Albion series, where that alliance has been formed, and we're just going to have to see how, um, you know, what the game might have in store. <laughs> right on cue. Uh, there are the Northmen. Let's go ahead and call some allies to war. Also, I want to check my knights to make sure that everyone has been properly. We do know that it's possible someone is trying to kill the Emperor still. We don't know who it is or why. It's very unfortunate, but we will have to see kind of how this goes. Um, actually, with that in mind, we could appoint a cupbearer real quick. Sister-in-law. Let's go ahead and appoint her. I should have done that last episode, to be frank. But also, while I'm thinking about it, as I mentioned, let's go ahead and ensure that, yeah... Marshal should be forbidden from fighting. Spy master forbidden from fighting. Elther raid as well, because he's my half-brother. Well, you never know. He might be the one scheming. <laughs> I'll at least let him fight. Duke Aineon. Zachariah is forbidden from fighting. Court gesture is forbidden, or er, not forbidden from fighting. Steward forbidden from fighting. Chancellor is forbidden from fighting. All right, cool. And now we will see how this goes. We do have some health problems. Nice has been taken prisoner during the Siege of Zamora. Yikes. So you might be a niece several generations removed. Oh, no, just kidding. She's literally... I don't know why I would think that. It's saying niece. Niece, as in <laughs> daughter of sibling. <laughs> um, okay. So she's a granddaughter of Emperor Zachariah and a daughter of Princess Cecilia, my sister. Cool. We have some health issues. Sore muscles, moderate penalty, back to your frozen hellscape of a home scum. Let's gain that prestige. We need to live basically, I would say, what? Oh, nice. Empress is pregnant again. Sore muscles. Yeah, so another two and a half years there. Another seven, almost eight years there, unfortunately, and that's a moderate penalty. And another two and a half years there. So... Those are dragging his health down a bit, and it's really seven years, and there, there are seven years in already kind of the later stage of his life, so faction created against me. Really? A liberty faction right now? Duke Gurrit II, strong arm of Strathclyde. What is it about Strathclyde? I feel like they've been a problem for a lot of this series. Maybe I'm being unfair. Maybe that's not the case. I'm going to wait to raise my army until I absolutely have to. Show Duke Aineon in at once. Your oaths are all that matter to me. Grand your rank increased. Getting personal. In our recent communication, Pope Gregorius of the Papacy expressed a... <laughs> the Pope of the Papacy expressed a want to focus on his ambitions and interests more. I could make sure that our coming letters contain more on a topic close to his heart. So he is generous, arrogant, gregarious. He's an astute intellectual, whole of body, wise man, theologian, scholar, pilgrim, athletic, and a veteran traveler. Nothing entices him like a good book. Yep. That's the one that lines up. Nephew Luigi was taken prisoner by Queen Berta of Italy after she went... We have a, a nephew named Luigi? I mean... We pretty much have to save him. That's the rule. All right. 
Oh, we're still really... Ugh, okay, the army's still spawning down here. All right, I'm gonna give the order for them to march up here. Hopefully, at least the, hopefully the Northmen will show up in a more convenient spot. That's really annoying. Let me move that rally point while I'm thinking about it. Cannot remove the last rally point. Well, let's put a new one there, then. And remove that one. Can I change the color? No? Just gonna stick with the green? Okay. <laughs> the Northman really did show up right on cue. Holy crap. And there's the death. Love it. Love it. We're gonna try and end this as fast as we can. We are probably not going to get any gold from defeating them. We haven't for centuries. We did early on, but not recently. All right, we can merge the army. The army is almost strong enough to take them on on their own, but we're going to wait for allies. My daughter. Nice. After an ancestor, Pleasance. Yeah, let's do that. May you grow strong and uh, may you grow to be strong and wise, my daughter. So, naming them after early characters in the series. So we want to go ahead and let's set her up with a spy master trait and we will raise her personally. Send a proposal. I'm going to give the order to attack because we really can't wait. Allies have shown up. This will be over nice and fast and we can there it is. Enforced demands. Yep. No gold. We get a reprieve from Scandinavian adventurers. What is it with adventurers? Good lord. Alright, you're in debt. Yes, I know. I know. It's a problem. Your brother Alpin died? Ah, uh, gained 11 stress. Heart failure. A scheme at court. My vassal, Duke Gurrit, is scheming against me. So... This would end the scheme. Hang on. Let's look at his contract. He doesn't have revocation protected. Let's go ahead and uh, throw him in jail. Pause. Okay. So, a couple of things we could do here. His heir is Lord Andreas. He's a magnanimous empath. Ooh, really? He's irritable. This is an act of tyranny if I execute him. Really, how's that? I don't I don't think so. But we could revoke the title, at the very least. So we could take the Duchy of Strathclyde away. What are you talking about? It's an act of tyranny. What are you talking about? He's a criminal. He's a criminal. Why would that be an act of tyranny? Negotiate release. We could banish him. Okay. Um, we could move him into the dungeon. That way he's more likely to remain... This would cause us to gain stress. It would it would anger his close family. We would gain some dread and lose some piety if we executed him. But it would put it would put Lord Andreas 
in charge. And I wouldn't mind that at all. He's 13. The regent would be a bishop for the time being, who seems relatively trustworthy. I don't know. Do we behead him or do we... <laughs> Ransom him off for gold? <laughs> uh. Oh, man. Now, one thing I could do... If I had a hook on him, which I don't, I'm kind of tempted just to move him to the dungeon. Or torture him. Might discover a secret if Duke Gurit 2 has one or knows one about me. Gains 45 stress because you're compassionate, gains 32 dread, spends one. You know what? Yeah, that's happening. That's happening. These rats might seem shy, I say as I strap the bucket to Gurit's exposed chest, but once it gets warm in there, they will do anything to escape. Luckily for them, their teeth are very sharp. He pleads for mercy as I reach for the glowing coals. Had to be done. Gains recently tortured for five years, gained 85 stress, critical. There's a 5% chance he will gain the trait lunatic. Looks like he didn't. Yep. He's gonna... Yeah, we can't torture him again for another five years. But he's not gonna be happy about that. Um, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Where'd you go? What's the easiest way to, like, pull him back up? There we go. The B button. It's magical. All right, we're going to move him to the dungeon. This is going to cause a stress spike here, but I don't really have a choice because I want to make sure he doesn't get away. All right, so we can lose a lot of gold and give up stress. Or we can say we're going to gain famished for five years. I'm... no, I'm just as good as the rest. We're going to try and maintain. Yeah, I don't want to shun food. That would be bad. Expedite schemes. Nice. Not going to do that. Okay, we're going to hopefully regain this debt here. Reeve Hrodbert of Northwich has accused my marshal Jarl of Amunder of having had an extramarital affair with his lover, Harriswith. How could he defile the sanctity of his marriage? This crime cannot go unpunished. Guards! These accusations are not but malice and lies. Wait. 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 Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, uh... All right. <laughs> dude. Dude. Okay. I was about to say these accusations are not but malice and lies. But it's your daughter. The trouble is, what's gonna happen here is she's gonna get put in prison. This crime cannot go unpunished. Yeah. Well. I don't necessarily want to punish her. He's the villain. Yeah, these accusations are not but malice and lies. They aren't. But if the punishment means she gets thrown in jail, that's we're not going with that. Alright, so Duke Gurit has been thrown into the dungeon, lowering his health. Currently feeling fine. He's gout ridden. Recently tortured. Have fun in there. Court physician's knowledge increases. <laughs> it's funny because the game definitely did not spill that or spell that out, excuse me. It just 
I happen to notice the connections. Like, oh no. <laughs> oh, CK3. Okay, we have a court event here. Let's see what's, the, what's going on here. In the past few days, neighboring Duke Lutbert has been visiting my court on his way to some holy site or something. Since his arrival, he has been outshining me with all his generosity towards my own quarters, who have all been lapping up his gold with no dignity. I can't help but scoff when I see him surrounded by adoring courtiers for the umpteenth time. My courtiers, a purse for you, good Melindu, and some coins for you, also kind to Ekrith. And for you, sweet Bellaquista, sweet honey cakes. Remember, riches are meant to be shared. Fifty percent chance he will gain opinion of me, and this will cause me to gain stress. We could gain some prestige from this, and he would lose opinion of me. Better him spending than me. Yeah, let me see if I can. Well, no, I don't want to gain more stress because we're improvident. Yeah, let's just say better him spending than me. Court grandeur increased. Nice. Almost back out of debt. And we just need to stay above debt. The Northmen are going to leave me alone for a while, which is nice. We are allied with the Holy Roman Empire. So we're not, we don't have to worry about an attack coming from the south. Why is there noise coming from inside my King Alfred's cabin? I look around the room. There's no one else here. It's empty and dark. Creak. Could it be a spirit? Some sort of malicious sprite. Suddenly it bursts open, revealing my jester Ulfkatel jumping and flailing his arms. But where are the King Alfred's cabinet ghost? I've come to make you laugh. He screams gleefully. By God, what if you're an assassin? You gain suspicious of furniture for ten years. Or you could say, ha, you almost got me there. I'm going to go with the, the higher stress result. Child of my dynasty. Ooh, grandchild. Sig, the daughter of King Leotir of Norger, has given birth to a son. Uh Oh that okay. <laughs> Got confused for a second, but yeah, it, this is the heirs, my current heirs. This is uh Zachariah's wife. And I knew it was, but I was just looking at it, like what's going on. Um yeah, Ethelbert is good. May you grow to be strong and wise. You are no longer as overwhelmed by stress. Marshall perk available. So absolute control. This enables absolute control for counties. So that should help with, yeah, n like immediately helped with taxes. Pope Gregorius is not swayed. Now, we should have lost some of these penalties. Okay, no. Still going to be another year or so. About another year and three months until some of these are lost. The big one goes away in six years if we can survive. Health is poor. But there may be some things I can select to help with that. We'll see. Would you let him go in return for this offer? No. Absolutely not. He's trying to kill me. That is unacceptable. All right, let's see if we can go with an option that improves health a little bit. Small boost. All right, so if we take that away... Any of these result in a health penalty of any kind or a health bonus of any kind? I don't think so. Oh, we have two lucky Anglo Saxon coins. I didn't know that. Yes, please. Let's equip that then. Extra taxes. That's helpful. Also, I might want to hire an antiquarian soon. I'm still just waiting for the, the other freaking shoe to drop. Like, at what point is something going to go horribly wrong for this guy? I am getting kind of excited about Zachariah, though, as an emperor, because it looks like the line might be in good shape. Ethelbert doesn't have any inheritable traits. And in some ways, Prince Constantine, who is now four, is going to be possibly a, a better heir. Because he has the hail physical trait, so that's a small health boost. Princess Plaisance, who we've already set up. I don't know why I was highlighting in prison there. We've already set her up with everything 
that needs to be set up there. I wasn't very good earlier in the series with making sure that newborn kids had an education selected, but we have been doing that lately. Hold court. Gesture for the first in line to approach. My marshal, Jarl Vermunder, approaches me, biting his lip like he often does. My lord, I have a brilliant idea. How about we host a fair? Or perhaps even a festival for the common folk to expose them to one of the different cultures in our beautiful kingdom? Vermunder explains his idea further until he realizes that he's dangerously close to over-explaining it. It'll cost money, but I'm sure it'll help foster a more positive relationship between our people. We'll hold a big festival celebrating both of our cultures. We could hold a small Norse fair in Edinburgh, or hold an exhibit in Norse lands to show them Anglo-Saxon greatness. I no, sorry. We're not going to do that. We're not going to spend money. My lord, this is outrageous. An agitated Earl Codwest stands before my throne. The body of my poor niece, the recently deceased Kinnegith, has been violated by that fiend you keep as your court physician. Theory. That vile mon monster has tampered with the corpse, using it to practice his obscure knowledge and leaving it disfigured and defaced. Please, he can't go unpunished. Of course, Tyri looks appropriately offended by the accusations. I have no idea what this man is talking about, my lord. Slander. Hmm... This is going to cost me prestige. I'm going to go ahead and say I, I trust him. Like, I just can't afford... We made a friend. Nice. I can't afford any of these other options at the moment. An ancient figure approaches my throne with a click and a tap of his cane accompanying each step. My lord, I'm a genealogist and you are aware you have noble origin. However, noble is not quite the same as divine or mythical. I desire to write a scroll which shall trace your complete lineage back to the dawn of history. For a mere few gold, I can reveal the truth to you and the world. You are a true descendant of the legendary founders of this land. So we would gain court grandeur and lose 75 gold here. Um, okay, I can gain that back in a couple of months. My business here is done. I will take that. Fishing net weavers constructed in Angus. Nice. In ancient times. After a few days, the genealogist Ulf returns. He unfurls a scroll long enough to encircle one of my provinces. My patriarch trips over it slightly as the unfurled end rolls to my throne's foot. I have here the truth of your origin, my lord. He clears his throat and begins to read. Today we unveil a great history. Standing before us is Emperor Antoninus, son of Emperor Zachariah the Genesis of Albion, sired by the fearful King Ecthagrin the Brilliant of Scotland, fruit of the loins of King Donald II with the tress of Scotland, son of the remarkable King Constantine II with the tress of King Kinaid MacAlpin of Scotland, child of King... All right. A few eyelids around the court begin to droop. It's time for a nap. I shall dream of my own glory. Or can say, enough, the Emperor of Albion owes you for your services. We would gain, we'd lose a lot of stress because you're impatient. And every courtier and guest would gain five opinion. Yep. That is gold well spent. Now stress is back down to almost minimal levels. Look at this. See, one of the things I really love about CK3 and Stellaris for that matter, one of the reasons I've enjoyed Paradox Grand Strategy games over the years so much is that we're not doing any fighting right now, right? There's no warfare happening at the moment. And there might be some people who would say, yeah, you should be conquering stuff. But, like, these games give you enough to do even when you're not fighting. Like, I, I remember playing... The, the one that's come up on the channel over and over again as an example is Sins of the Solar Empire for many years. Love that game. Beautiful game. Fun to play. More complicated, well, maybe not more complicated than StarCraft, but like I enjoy it more than StarCraft. That's how much I like it. And, all right, we're out of debt. That's good. And the thing is, like, it's nice to conquer territory in that game, but like you have to imagine the things that are going on because like the game doesn't give you anything to work with. In this, it's like there's so much going on within your borders and there's so much intrigue and interesting stuff that can pop up. It makes it really, really engaging and enjoyable. In my attempts to align Pope Gregorius to my interests, I have found an opportunity. I think I could argue that our goals are, in fact, the same. As I dictate my next letter, I emphasize those shared interests. Uh, let's try to maintain subtlety. Alright, so King Constantine's crown has low durability. That's going to be gone in 14 years. I might want to hire an antiquarian before long. All right, so we can join this hunt. 
It looks like we are mainly traveling through some hills. A forest guide would help a little bit. Mercenary guards would help even more, but that would be really expensive. But there would be no danger. You know what? The last time I went out on a hunt, I just I, I don't I don't know that it's worth the risk at this point. We want to keep things stable as much as possible. I think we just need to chill. Oh, Pope Gregorius has passed away. <laughs> Welp, Pope Alexander. <laughs> Want to give me some gold? <laughs> I will use this wealth wisely. Thank you so much. Okay, we have some inspirations. Skill is merely decent. Ooh, a master crownsmith. 98 gold. Huh. If only I had money. Oh, wait. The new pope. Very... By the way, can we just say for a second... Is that, like, just Jude Law with a beard? Because, like, what is with this ridiculously handsome Pope on the throne all of a sudden? Also, is he... Dude is huge. It's just so interesting to see... Alright, we don't have any information on... Interesting. One living member of his house. Cute. I can see you making stuff up, CK3. I, I see you. We all see you. We know what's happening. Okay. Um, his skill is merely decent. I don't know that I want to sponsor that too. I think I'd rather spend money on buildings finally, now that I can do that, you know? So there's Salisbury, which I had the option to upgrade this blacksmith. And I do think that I want to go ahead and do that. But also, having some of these upgraded uh, is really... A significant yeah we're gonna continue upgrading the trade ports notice after ordering that we're still like in terms of the amount of money that we have we're still in good shape which is pretty cool I'm all right with that All right, Duke Gurrit has escaped. It's not an act of tyranny. What are you talking about? Okay, so if we fail to imprison him, he will rise up with other disgruntled vassals. We will literally cause a civil war over his escape. This is a moment of truth. How did he escape the frickin' dungeons? I should have tortured him again. That's what I should have done. What I should have done is murdered him. Um, let's take a look at our vassals. Alright, so he... Like, militarily... The strongest vassals are in my corner. Duke Ulsulf, not so much. Duke Gurret, not so much. But King Edred is in my corner. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna attempt to imprison him. This is we're gonna do this. I, I know it's a little bit, you know, just to introduce a little bit of spice here. Um, we're going to be wrapping this episode up in just a bit, but just so that we can have a little bit more going on. But not just for that reason. The fact that he escaped, I mean, he's going to continue scheming against me. You know? So, let's see what we can do here. No exposed agents yet. Yeah, I know who he is, though. Like, I know it was him. So here's what we're going to do. 
we are going to attempt to imprison him. He will rise up in rebellion without the disgruntled vassals. So we're just going to pull that trigger, which will cause a rebellion. Probably not a large one. We can call... All right, there we go. Let's pause for a second. Yeah, that's not too bad at all. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to raise all the armies in Lothian. And I'm also going to go ahead and call... <laughs> uh, we're going to call Emperor Antoninus. The Duke of Spluto. We're, we're going we're gonna to call in friends. We're going to crush these guys. And it's going to be great. Excellent. Alright, we might be able to get this done in the space of this episode. We'll see. Allies on the way. They don't really have the manpower to stand up to me. So it's like, I dare you to start something. Got him. With any luck, he's involved. Alright, he's not there. Uh, I'm going to head up here and go ahead and attack this army while they're right there. There's a couple fights to take care of. Cadet Branch. Alright, we have a new Cadet Branch, it seems like. Inspired person can be sponsored. Yes, I know. I'm not paying attention to that one right now. We can ransom this character. Nice! Let's go ahead and do that. Are you serious? Alright, well, the Master Crownsmith that I just gave money to, I can't actually get anything from him either. Man, I am just not having good luck with inspirations. Even the ones that look like the like luck is going to be decent. I can ransom this character. Yep, ransom them off. I will take the gold. I don't want to go back into debt over this. But we're going to try and end this as rapidly as possible. Ailing with age. By the will of Jesus, why am I so sore? I slept well, as well as I usually do, but whenever I stretch, I can feel my bones all but sparking as they scrape against each other. I stare down at my hands, closely observing the nails, yellowing with age atop skin that's wrinkling more than I'd like. It's difficult to imagine that youth once surged through this flesh, hot and vital. Gah, do everyone's joints creak like this? So the king is getting older. Excuse me? Princess Ethelthrith, the poet of Albion, that wrote a poem about me like two episodes ago? What? You scheming little brat. Okay. Yeah, murder scheme has been abandoned. Imprisoned. Interesting. Um, I could send her... This, this might seem a little bit strange. Oh wow, I can't send her a gift? Really? I could gift her an artifact, potentially. That would be something to improve her opinion of me, which would make it easier to imprison her. Basically lull her into a, a false sense of security. The Spears Song. Yeah, you're a poet. Here, have an artifact. You scheming brat. In prison. Good. Now we could execute her, and it wouldn't be seen as an act of tyranny. Can't revoke a title from an ally without a title revocation reason. Okay. So we're going to move her to the dungeon. Deeply disappointed in you, daughter. Looks like the allies are taking care of some of this. Fascination discovered. Royal prerogative. Fantastic. And with that, we can raise our vassal tax and levy contribution immediately. 
This is going to affect the opinion of a lot of vassals, but vassals cannot wage war against other vassals unless they use a hook on their liege. Vassals' titles cannot be inherited by characters outside the realm. All vassals who refuse title revocation or vassal retraction are considered criminals. That's happening. Pass law is much better for an established older emperor to establish, to, to change crown authority than the alternative. So that's the kind of route that we're going to take in this particular case. But on that note, um, with that imprisonment of <laughs> freaking Antonines' daughter, firstborn daughter, first child plotting to kill him. How freaking tragic is that? Um, we are going to stop this episode here. In the next one, we're going to end the Civil War, hopefully swiftly. Uh, we already are doing quite well against it. And I think when this siege completes, there's a good chance that we'll be able to end it right there. But if not, we'll just take control of some territory here. This will help consolidate the control that I've already established. And we are also working our way towards the very last perk here, which is the Overseer perk, which will give additional martial, additional stewardship, which is nice, and better control growth, which will help for the remainder of Antoninus's years. But he doesn't have that long left, unfortunately. So um, it seems like... Zachariah is going to be taking over. I don't know how that's going to go. He's 35. There's a part of me that wants to see Prince Constantine raised to take the throne. There's a part of me that wants to try to make that happen, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. So we're going to have to see what happens with this next transition. And also, I am still actively pondering... I've been enjoying playing peacefully for a few episodes after so much chaos, but I am actively pondering like what else we might be able to do. We might oversee this last transition to the throne and kind of like be able to look forward. There also are these decisions in terms of consecrating the bloodline, which would involve having a character deliberately raised up to religious icon or strengthened bloodline. So if you have any particular suggestions or preferences for what you might want to see in the series, let me know. We could also always transition this time slot to another series or another game. But CK3, I would say, after this series, is here to stay. I've really, really enjoyed bringing this to the channel. The actual cadence of the series with the episode release has not been to my liking, but that's just external stuff that is um, rapidly kind of mending. So, with that being said, whether we continue this series for a while longer or switch to another series or another game, we'll sort of take all of the comments into account and see what people think and uh, go from there. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along for early episodes, channel emotes, and member badges. Look for the join button. New episodes drop at 11 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time every day but Tuesday, and comments are always welcome. So leave your thoughts below, and I'll see you next time.